This is some of the last footage that I filmed of Hydrox. It is with great sadness that I announce that Hydrox has passed away and crossed over the Rainbow Bridge. It happened during the first week of August, but I was waiting for Hydrox to be returned home and for everything to be finalized before making the announcement. Hydrox had a private cremation and her ashes are now in a beautiful photo urn. Yes, we found out from the vets that Hydrox was a girl. They also estimated her age to be about 14 years old. I knew she was a minimum of 10 years old, but they thought she was quite older than that. So for a feral cat, she lived quite a long life since the life expectancy of a feral cat is about half of the life expectancy of an indoor cat. Since this channel is about the truth about feral cats, I'd like to provide you with the details of what happened. It was a very difficult and traumatic few days for Hydrox, for myself, for Ditto, for all of the cats, and it may be difficult to listen to. So Hydrox was fine. Her and Ditto were pretty much inseparable after Ditto went back outside. I am so glad that Ditto went back outside to be with Hydrox for the last seven weeks of her life. They were so happy together. They were never out of each other's sight. They ate breakfast together and dinner together, and they kept an eye on each other throughout the night. You could feel the happiness emanating off of them when they were together. Now that we know for sure that Hydrox was a girl, there is a very good chance that Hydrox was Ditto's mom. I had mentioned that Ditto rubs up against Hydrox the same way that Splash rubs up against Stella, and we all know that Splash is totally a mama's boy. It ended up that Ditto was probably a mama's boy also. Chances are also good that Hydrox could have been Stella and Boo's mom too. It's totally different now that we know that Hydrox was a girl. If you've been following the daily vlogs, I had mentioned on a few occasions that I thought Hydrox could have been a girl. I could not get a good look at her backside for years, and when I was finally able to, I noticed that it looked different from Boo and Ditto, who are clearly male. The overwhelming consensus in the comments was that she looked like a male, so I kept referring to her as a he, but now we know. Hydrox was definitely female. So everything was fine. I knew Hydrox was getting older. Her very dark fur had been turning more of a reddish color, which could be indicative of many things. Uh, it could be indicative of laying in the sun or of a diet low in meat protein, which was not the case with Hydrox, or just from age and Hydrox was getting older, or it could be the result of a thyroid, kidney, or liver issue. I had also noticed that Hydrox seemed to be getting a bit of a pot belly. I was a bit concerned about that, but Hydrox also had been eating so much food on a daily basis, it could easily have just been weight gain. She was eating about three times the amount of food that Ditto was eating, and she did not have any other strange symptoms. So I decided to keep her under observation. And if I noticed any behavior changes or anything major changing, I'd make plans to try and trap her and get her to a vet. And that was all in the few months leading up to her passing. The one other thing that I noticed was that she was out in the rain more often and she'd be getting wet. Normally when it rained, she would seek shelter in the alcove under the house where it stays dry or in one of the cat shelters or under an overhang. But there were a few times where she was just out in the rain. So I decided to turn my mini greenhouse into a rain shelter for her and Ditto. The plastic cover on it was already ripped, so I took it off and I attached some tarps to the top and sides of it to block rain. And I put small pieces of carpet on the shelves so the cats could lay on the shelves and they loved it. Hydrax would lay on a shelf on one side and Ditto would lay on a shelf on the other side. And even if it didn't rain, they enjoyed spending the night in there. This is some footage from the security cameras of their last night together in the rain shelter. They were so happy being together and being in that shelter.
So the following morning, I woke up and checked the security camera footage, which I often did to see what the cats were up to overnight or what critters might have walked through the yard. What I saw that day was really disturbing. I'm not going to share the footage with you. I'll spare you of that. But what happened was Hydrox left the rain shelter and walked to the other side of the yard where she was digging in the dirt. It looked like she was using a litter box. The next footage that the camera recorded was Hydrox walking back to the patio, but dragging her hind legs behind her. There were about four or five other clips recorded of Hydrox moving around the patio area, but dragging her hind legs. I immediately knew that was not good. I saw the footage several hours after it happened, so I had no idea what the situation would be when I went outside to feed the cats. Ditto walked across the patio towards me as if he was saying, you have to help. I heard meowing coming from the bushes, and when I looked, Hydrox was laying in the bushes along the side of the patio. I knew I had to try to get her into a trap or carrier, so I immediately got the trap out of the garage and set it up not far from her. I also set up two different carriers. Everything was baited with stinky tuna, which I know she liked, and that's what worked to get Ditto to go into the trap when I had to take him to the animal hospital. I sprayed the inside of the trap and the carriers with pet remedy because I know that helps to keep the cats calm, but it also attracts them. So Stella and Simba will walk right into a carrier if I spray it with pet remedy and they'll then roll around in the pet remedy. After a while, I tried to coax her out of the bushes in the direction of the carriers and trap with a small plate of food. I wanted to get her out from inside the bushes and closer to the food in the trap. Instead, she went in the opposite direction. For an injured cat, she was extremely alert and extremely fast. So I waited a while and then I tried coaxing her out from the other side where she was and I was able to get her to come out into the open and eat a little food. Then I waited again to see what she would do and she wanted nothing to do with the trap or carriers, and she was just laying there. She laid there for a while. The only other thing I could do was try to pick her up. I figured she was injured, she can't use her back legs, it should be pretty easy. That was completely wrong, and it was a good thing that I put leather gloves on because she fought me. She was still a very strong cat, so I just left her alone. I didn't want to freak her out or make anything worse, and I let her relax. After a while, I moved the traps and carriers closer to where she was, and I went inside. She wasn't going anywhere, and she had eaten a little food earlier, so I gave her another small plate to try to lure her closer to the trap. Well, she wanted nothing to do with the food and ran deep into the bushes along the back of the house. Again, it was amazing how fast she was, considering she was dragging her hind legs behind her. I found where she was in the bushes, and I tried again to put a plate of food near her, and again, she moved deeper into the bushes. So there's bushes along the side of the patio, the back of the house, and the side of the house. At this point, she was in the bushes along the side of the house. She kept scooting farther and farther into the bushes, and that's how far she had moved. And all the bushes were pretty overgrown since I didn't have enough time to do much yard work this summer with everything else that had been going on. So at that point, I knew I was not going to be able to get her into a trap or carrier without help. So I went inside to call animal control. I explained the situation to them and the guy on the other end of the phone was so nice. He totally understood everything that I was telling him. And I explained that I wanted to get the cat into a trap or carrier so I could take the cat to a vet. He said there was nothing more that I could do that I hadn't already done. He said it didn't sound like the cat was very mobile, so it wouldn't be going far. And I should just let it relax where it was until he sent someone by. So that's what I did. Two hours later, the doorbell rang and two people from animal control arrived to help me get Hydrox to the vet. Again, they were so nice, just such nice people. I showed them the last place where I saw Hydrox along the side of the house and we searched all of the bushes there and could not find Hydrox anywhere. Then we searched the entire yard, twice. Front yard, backyard, side yards, We look behind things, inside things, above things, below things. They even checked inside the feral cat shelters and we could not find Hydrox anywhere. 
We searched the neighboring yards as best as we could, and we even searched along the perimeter of the woods, and again, we could not find hydrox anywhere. Animal control told me that they didn't think hydrox would have gotten very far in the condition she was in. They thought she might return for dinner. They told me not to change my daily routine in any way because cats are smart, and if they think something strange or wrong, they will stay away. She said to continue doing everything that I had been doing and that it was very important for me to stick to the daily routine. She also stressed that I should not try to pick up Hydrox if I saw her, only try to lure her into a trap or carrier. She did not want me getting bit or scratched, and Hydrox has always been the most feral of all the cats. She's never been very open to physical contact at all. Hydrox did not show up for dinner that night. It is 6.35 p.m. And Ditto came by for dinner and Hydrox did not come by. I don't know where Hydrox is. Ditto seems to be a bit upset. Um, so I gave him a lot of pets before he ate. And he was really happy to have pets. So I think Ditto is worried about Hydrox. I don't know if Ditto knows where Hydrox is. He might know where Hydrox is. I hope he knows where Hydrox is. Um, because it would be nice if he went and he hung out with Hydrox. Um, it would be nice if Ditto hunted a bird or a mouse or something and then gave it to Hydrox because that's what Stella used to do with the kittens. Stella would go out hunting and then she would bring back her prey and her and the kittens would have a feast. So if Hydrox is somewhere where he's not very mobile um, and Ditto is able to hunt for dinner and bring him dinner, that would be absolutely awesome. Um, so I gave Ditto some canned salmon. Um, it's the whole hearted pate. I mixed some water in and I put a few crunchies on top. And yeah, I'm just trying to go about the normal routine because that's what was suggested. And I have no idea what's gonna happen. I don't know if Hydrox will show up uh, overnight or tomorrow. Um, or what? I know Ditto's not too happy. So what I ended up doing was putting water bowls and little plates of food near every corner of the patio so she wouldn't have to walk far if she was nearby. She did not show up for breakfast or dinner the following day. I looked for her multiple times that day and I did not see her anywhere. It's 8.30 p.m. and I was just cleaning up and about to go inside when I saw Ditto on the patio. So he's been hanging out by the woods all day. He took a nap in the grass. Well, first he went exploring in the woods for a while. Then he took a nap in the grass and I was wondering if he was gonna stay there all night, but thankfully he came over to the patio. So I had a bowl of some dry food out for him and he ate that, and I just gave him some um, wholehearted tuna with a squeeze up on top, because I know he likes that. And I'm just gonna hang out with him for a little while, just until he's done eating, because it's starting to get dark, and if, if raccoons and skunks and possums start wandering around, I just wanna make sure that I'm out here to chase them away. So this is Ditto's first full day without Hydrox. Um, I haven't seen Hydrox all day. The last time I saw him was yesterday. I don't know if Ditto has seen him. I don't know if Ditto knows where he is. Um, I don't know if Ditto was hanging out by the woods because Hydrox is in there. I don't know. Um, but he was meowing when he saw me um, on the patio just a little while ago when he showed up. And I was like, hi Ditto, and he was meowing at me. Then he was walking around the patio and meowing. So I thought he was meowing for Hydrox, because he usually meows for Hydrox. And I'm giving him dry food just because he likes it so much. It's kind of like a comfort food, so I just want to make sure he has plenty to eat. He's been very depressed. Now, Grandma and Grandpa, having known other cats who just went off to die somewhere and were never seen again, assumed that's what happened to Hydrox. 
When cats are sick or if they know they're going to die, they will often go find a quiet and private final resting place. So by now we had all resigned ourselves to that fact. Hydrox had been missing for more than 24 hours. We had no idea where Hydrox was. We knew she was in very bad shape and could not use her hind legs. And because of that, she was very vulnerable to predators, especially at night. We really didn't expect to see her again. I told grandma that I was not going to assume the worst had happened to her until at least a week went by. If a week went by and she didn't show up anywhere, then I could assume that she had passed. Until then, there was still a chance that she would show up. I woke up the next day and was in complete shock when I checked the security camera footage from overnight. Hydrox had returned to the patio and the rain shelter earlier that morning, still dragging her hind legs. She tried to pull herself onto a shelf in the rain shelter, but she couldn't. She loved that shelter. She pulled herself to the side of the patio where she rested a while, and then it looked like she pulled herself into the alcove under the house. There was no footage that captured any of her movement after that. By the time I saw the footage, it was several hours after it was recorded, so I didn't know what I would find when I went outside. I didn't see Hydrox anywhere. I searched the entire yard, and I could not find her. I thought maybe she had a hiding place in my neighbor's yard, which is extremely overgrown and pretty much just a wilderness, so it's like impossible to find a cat hiding in that yard. I assumed that's where she might have been, and that's where she might have went back to. I continued to follow animal controls advice and I went about my daily routine. I left food and water out for Hydrox and Ditto and then went out to run some errands. When I came back a few hours later, I walked across the patio and noticed a tail in the window of the custom feral cat shelter under the house. It was Hydrox's tail. So when Hydrox returned that morning, it seems that she had dragged herself into her favorite little cat shelter. She loved that cat house. So I called grandma and grandpa to tell them the news and we all agreed that the best thing to do at this point was to just let her rest. It was now two days after she had disappeared, more than 48 hours, and she was not in better shape than she was before. We all knew the inevitability of the situation. She was obviously tired from dragging herself around and she was happy in her shelter. It could be that she wanted it to be her final resting place. She loved that shelter. So we decided to obey her wishes. And sometimes that is the most respectful thing you can do for a person or an animal is just to just to respect what they want. A few hours later, I looked out the back door around dinner time and saw that Hydrox had dragged herself out of the shelter and was laying on the patio about three feet in front of it. I went outside to see how she was and she was in very bad shape. She looked small and weak and her hind legs were completely lifeless and paralyzed. She meowed at me and I could tell that she wanted the bowl of water that was under the patio table a few feet away from her. I put it right in front of her and she was very happy to drink some water. I went inside and put two plates of food together and put the plates in front of her also. When she saw the food, she started meowing and I knew she was meowing for Ditto to let him know that dinner was served because that's what she always did. And Ditto came from somewhere under the fence and he saw Hydrox. During all this time, I don't think Ditto knew where Hydrox was. So for the two days that Hydrox was missing, Ditto looked like he was looking for her. He was not his normal self, and he even spent some time laying by the side of the woods across the street for hours. And he looked so sad and depressed. And when he finally saw Hydrox and the condition that she was in, I do believe that he understood how sick she was. And I also believe that Hydrox came back to say goodbye to Ditto. The two of them shared their last dinner together and communicated however cats communicate to each other. Here's some footage from that meal. It's 7.45 p.m. and Hydrox and Ditto are sharing a meal. So Hydrox was in the shelter all day 
and I just saw him on the patio, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes ago. So when I saw him out there, I went outside and he's meowing, he sounds weak. So I moved a bowl of water over to him and a plate of dry food and a plate of wet food. And he drank a lot of water. He's still drinking water. I don't know if he's had any water for the past few days because it hasn't rained. It rained today, but the past two days have been dry. And the last time I saw him was two days ago, like in the morning. So I don't know where he went. I don't know if he ate or drank anything, but he's definitely drinking a lot of water now. And I don't want to go out and disturb him because I don't want to scare him away. The goal right now is just to make him as comfortable as possible. Ditto is very happy to be with him. Um, when I went outside and when Hydrax was meowing, he was meowing for Ditto. And Ditto heard it and Ditto came over. So uh, the two of them are so happy together. So I am so happy that uh, Ditto chose to go back outside and be with Hydrox because Hydrox cannot use his hind legs right now and we don't know what the situation is going to be for Hydrox. Um, I tried getting him in a trap or a carrier the other day and he absolutely refused. In fact, he ran away in the condition he was in. He was able to run away. So we're just going to take it one day at a time and uh, it might be a situation where all I can do is just make him as comfortable as possible. That could be the best uh, case right now. We, we just have to wait and see. Right now, um, he's drinking water. Maybe he'll eat something and hopefully he'll go back in the shelter tonight and just hang out in the shelter. Hydrox didn't eat any food, but instead drank an incredible amount of water. Later, she slowly dragged herself back into her shelter. She spent her last night in her favorite place in her shelter. And again, we just wanted to respect her wishes. The following day, I asked grandma and grandpa to come over and help me with Hydrox. I knew it would be one of three possible situations that day. Either Hydrox had passed away in the shelter, or she would drag herself out of the shelter again for water or food, or she would stay in the shelter and continue to suffer. If she was still alive, now that she had time to rest, and she and Ditto had said their goodbyes and had closure, I wanted to get her to the animal hospital. So she did not come out of the shelter that day and we couldn't see enough looking through the window into the shelter to really know what was going on. By the afternoon, we knew we would have to pull the shelter out from under the house and try to get to her. Grandpa was willing to do that, but I decided to call Animal Control to help us. Once again, a super nice person from Animal Control showed up less than an hour after I called them. He and Grandpa together pulled the cat shelter out from under the house, opened it up, and they were able to get Hydrox out of the shelter and into a carrier. Hydrox was still alive, but very weak and very tired. She didn't try to get out of the carrier, and she did not meow once during the entire ride to the local emergency animal hospital. When we got to the animal hospital, because of her condition, the triage vets took her into the emergency room right away. A few minutes later, we were called into one of the patient rooms. They told us that Hydrox had no pulse in her back legs. So the circulation to her back legs had been cut off. Usually that happens from a blood clot that travels from the heart to another area in the body. It's known as an arterial thromboembolism. Hydrox had what is known as a saddle thrombus since the blood clot lodged in an area that cut off blood supply to the back limbs and tail. It happens more in cats than dogs and when it does happen, it happens very suddenly and there's really no warning that it's going to happen and there's nothing that you can do about it. Because she had been dragging her hind legs around for several days, she had several necrotic wounds on her hind legs. They also found a large mass in her abdomen, which they assumed was a tumor of some kind. 
and she was severely dehydrated. She had probably not eaten or drank anything for the two days that she went missing, which would explain why she drank so much water the day before. They confirmed what we already knew, which was that the best and only thing to do for her was to put her down. So we made that decision. I signed the paperwork for a private cremation because I thought that would be the most respectful thing to do for her. A few minutes later, they brought her into the room and we said our last goodbyes and she made her journey over the Rainbow Bridge. Over the next few days, Ditto definitely missed Hydrox. We all did. Even the inside cats knew what was going on. We went through a period of mourning and adjustment. I made sure to spend extra time with Ditto and give him lots of extra pets and attention. He didn't walk around looking for Hydrox like he had done before when she was missing. He knew the situation and he responded differently. And he has adjusted pretty well to being on his own outside. Again, I've been spending a lot more time with him and just taking everything one day at a time because that's all we can do right now. And now that Hydrox is no longer with us, it changes Ditto's situation. And I've been working on training and socializing Ditto for a potential life inside. And he's now allowing me to pet him a lot more. I've even been able to rub his belly a very little bit and I could get my hands under him and I could even pick him up a few inches. So my goal is to be able to really be able to pick him up. And then once I'm able to do that, I know I'm easily able to get him in a carrier and uh, to a vet. So uh, that's the current goal right now. So whether it's in my house or someone else's house is yet to be determined. And if and when that takes place is also yet to be determined. But that's the situation with Ditto right now because Hydrox is no longer here and the two of them had such a strong relationship. I'm so happy that Ditto spent the last seven weeks of Hydrox's life with Hydrox. So that was Hydrox's final journey. It's sad that she had to leave us, but it was her time. She had a very good life for a feral cat. She loved her heated cat house shelter. She loved laying in the yard. She loved laying in the sun. She loved laying on the patio furniture. And she loved spending time with Ditto. She loved Ditto. And she loved being an outside cat. Some feral cats like Stella or Boo have aspirations of a life inside and others don't. Some are more open to human interaction and others aren't. Hydrox came a long way during the last few years of her life with regards to being able to trust me and humans in general. Even when grandma and grandpa were over, she'd hang out on the patio and she wouldn't run away. So she came a really, really long way. Years ago, she would never come near the back door for food. And now she was eating all of her meals by the back door. So she made a lot of progress. So I really believe that she made as much progress as she wanted to and as much progress as she was comfortable with. She lived around 14 years, which is a very good amount of time for a feral cat. And it's also possible that she was even older since it was only an estimate from the vets. I knew she was a minimum of 10 years old just based on how long I've been living in this house. And based on the vets examining her, they thought she was a bit older than that. So we're going to go with 14 as a minimum. While she was with us, she had plenty of food, water, shelter, and friendship, which is everything that a feral cat wants and needs. Now that she's no longer with us, she's with all of our pets, friends, and family members who have crossed over and are watching us from the other side of the Rainbow Bridge. Rest in peace, Hydrox. You were loved and you're missed.